Okay, uh, in the last class, we were just started discussion on what is called definitive maneuvers. Okay, what we said is that for any shape, full size shape or even uh, model shape, in order to assess, characterize, determine its handling qualities, which may be you know maneuverability and controllability qualities, there are certain definitive maneuvers. I mentioned some few of them, for example, one was diurnal spiral maneuver. This is also known as a direct spiral maneuver. Then we had then we have There are others. See, why I wrote all this? I'll <coughs> excuse me. I'll tell you. There are many maneuvers for determining many as different aspects. Today we'll, for example, discuss. We'll be discussing all of them uh, eventually. So there is a maneuver called spiral maneuver. There is also it's uh, there is a version of it which is known as a direct spiral maneuver. There is a version which is known as reverse spiral maneuver. Then there is a maneuver called pull out maneuver. Now this three primarily they are trying to assess if there is any lack of stability on the hull that you see the index C is negative or positive and if so how much. The full purpose of this test will I will discuss that would be to essentially determine stability ok. This one primarily meant for determining how fast and how quickly it respond to radar action. Okay. Then this turning circle is of course, turning ability is one of the most important one. And there are other maneuvers I was mentioning yesterday stopping etcetera. So, these are all in horizontal plane for the obviously applies for ship. For submarine etcetera, you have besides these also maneuvers in vertical plane, there is one maneuver called just to mention to you maybe very briefly I will mention. One is called meander. one is vertical overshoot and there may be of course, other maneuvers emergency re recovery maneuver for example, etcetera, etcetera. What we are going to do now today is going to start with this and try to tell you what how do you conduct the maneuver, how what do you measure. So, let us start with the first one okay, that is spiral maneuver. What you do here? Now, in all these maneuvers, I will first describe the procedure. What you do? You remember, we have to remember all these are actual tests and trials. In fact, you do that uh, just before delivery of the ship. Always the ship has to be steadied at a course initially. Okay? Initially, you have to always steady it at a
straight line course at the uh, at the given speed normally what happened at this point I, let me tell you you would have set the engine at a certain rpm which is giving you a certain speed once you set that during the test you will not touch the engine it will just be at that rpm okay but obviously speed may slow down as you maneuver but the engine settings remain same what you do is like that you know after it is steadied first you give a rudder some degree let us say I will call plus as port minus as starboard or say let me just call you know normally why I say plus and this port starboard is because the practitioners understand that as port starboard we who are talking about dynamics with respect to axis system we may try to identify you know clockwise to be plus and anti clockwise minus etcetera etcetera because in our case clockwise is plus because z is down okay then what you do give rudder to this thing and let the ship a steady steady side dot or r means steady yaw rate obviously if you give that it is going to have a rate of turn fair. it is going to turn right obviously when you go rather 15 degrees is going to turn eventually and you wait enough time so that the rate of turn has become constant hold it constant for about a minute this is what you are measuring it okay then what we do we have we must understand this see if you look at this here the vessel is going to basically go on a straight line then it is going to begin to turn eventually at a steady rate rate of turn will become steady keep it ho uh, holding hold it maybe about a minute or so then reduce rudder Well, 12 point what I am saying you know here if you see the description description is very simple all that is being done here is to trying to find out for a given rudder angle what is the steady rate of turn okay but you must start from one side so you had a 15 degree it is turning so it is turning like that now you see if you look at this diagram I will tell you how it will look like so the ship was coming I am just drawing the CG, CG line coming in a straight line now you held it 15 degree so it is going to eventually turn like that so this is steady so up say by this time from here it has started turning steady now at this point you lower the rudder to 12 and half degree or some another smaller value then it is going to have another turn eventually but it will have a larger rate of turn again you stop it after a while make it another larger rate of turn so, what you are doing is essentially trying to measure delta versus r or psi dot that is what you are measuring. So, for each one 
Then I will come to that. Now you will see what is uh, what is the big thing. Remember, I am achieving this always from one side. I will just um, uh, draw this diagram, then we will see. So what happened? We have this. In this case, say R delta or so you start from some point. Okay. So let us say I have this delta initially when I started first one 15 degree delta. So I got this R, I pl plotted this value. Okay. Now next after a while I met delta to be 12 and half degree measure this value. So what you expect is that you should get a graph like that. This is my say minus R, this is my minus delta, I mean whichever way you call. Okay. The unfortunately what happened? Now you measured that. You see, this is an interesting part that you just measured that. But what would happen in some ships? You will find that this plot doesn't show like that. It shows something like this. Suddenly it goes here, goes like that, and at this point suddenly it goes here. I will explain to that what. But so you get the points like that in some ships. At this point suddenly it jumps to this point. Then it comes here, 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 here. If you come this way. Or rather, it, no, no, sorry. Come this way. This is more logical. And if you go this way, you end up getting this way. I'll explain to that in a minute. What it means, you see here. See, this is the very interesting, and you must you must pay attention to this hysteresis loop type. What is happening? Some ships. Suppose you measured it. It turns out there's a hysteresis loop. What it means that I gave a rudder here. This angle. I was getting the same direction, the direction I gave rudder, I am turning in that direction. But some point, then I keep on lowering the rudder, okay. I bring it to 0, yet the shape is turning in the same direction. See, what is this point would imply? What it may imply is that I have brought my rudder to 0 from this side, from negative side, I see this shape. From here, I brought the rudder to 0. It is still turning this way because that is, there is a rate of turn. Okay. Then I lower rudder, rudder is on the other side, it is still turning in the same direction. But there is a point, suddenly you will find out that beyond that if the rudder is slightly improved, increased, then suddenly it will swing to the other side. And then it will have a rate of turn, in the, that means at this point also it is turning here, but suddenly when you give more, it will begin to turn the correct side. Swing it, suddenly it will swing to the other side. This is the nature. See what I am saying, of course you say why should it happen? No. The point is that you have no control, you are doing a test and when you are doing a test, you are actually measuring as the ship behaves and this is how you find out. Supposing you find out some ship behaving that way, what does it mean? In this place, you really have no control because I give a radar here 0, yet it is turning and you know it is turning from the same direction because you are giving at that side. Then I give a negative rudder means let us say I give a minus 1 degree, it is still turning in the opposite side, but then when I give minus 2 degree, it is then begin to turn on the correct side and suddenly swings past. So it means in this region that is rudder angle this to this, I have no control. This is a indication of if, if this happens, this extent is an indication of lack of straight line stability. See what is happening is that rudder is giving extra force. You know, if I use equation of motion, uh, I had equation of motion m uh, all that equation, this side was 0. But now I am going to have this side rudder forces, y r, well rudder forces let us say. What it means is that see that had the rudder not been there, I have no controllability because radar is there. So, there, because there is an unstable force, there is a force which is trying to go in the opposite side. But if I give radar beyond this, this threshold limit, then radar force is enough, large enough to absorb that unstable hull forces. Obviously, if this is larger, if this hysteresis is larger, it would imply larger instability. 
Now, this part is very, very similar. In fact, what would happen is that actually, if I were to look at that, the, the way the picture is, this is my stable ship, and this slope, this slope is dr by d delta, or you can say, or rather, no, no, we can say d delta by d psi dot. So, this is positive one side you know the side it is supposed to be, but the one that is behaving that way one can show that it has got actually d delta by d psi dot opposite, it will be this one. And I will explain to see sometimes there is a difficulty understanding very nice analogy, very nice analogy with an initially unstable ship with a negative gm ship, what happened to a negative gm ship? There is an angle of lol. How does the GM look like? You see here, I have got here healing moment, let us say, which is actually say you know delta Zz, let me call it that way with, with this may be the weight or W into Zz, call it Wzz otherwise. Now, this is a shape with an angle of lol, you agree? What happened? I have a healing moment here, it has got this, I lower the healing moment it has got this, I lower the healing moment it has got this, but then I am giving a negative healing moment. Remember it keeps coming, the, the, the angle become on the other side, it comes up to this point, right, even if I give a negative healing moment. Then if I give beyond that some value, suddenly what will happen this this will shift here and then it will achieve this angle, means the vessel you see this vessel I am giving a healing moment, then I it is on this side, I eventually lower it down give this, it is still on this side, this point, then when I give little more suddenly it will swing to this point, suddenly it will swing to this side, so that means it will behave that way and if I go that way also it will behave that way. So, that means it is going to behave healing moment versus this thing in this way. So, see it is exactly same as the fact that my slope of this curve which is my metacentric height being negative. If the metacentric height was positive I would have had got a graph which would have been simply like this, it would have gone this way and come back this way. You see this comparison of that. So, what it means is that when you determine, when you find out, this will never look so nicely like that. Now, if you do actually a actual experiment, the plots will look something like that and it has been uh, seen, you will find plots which will look something like some kind of loop like that. You know, it will not be so nice and what we have presented, but it will look something in actual, this thing it will look something like if you actually take a measurement, but moment you have an hysteresis loop, moment you have a loop that implies immediately that you are not having a control of the turn with radar in that loop, because here it shows even if I have my radar 0, I am still turning and this happens on one side, the side you are turning as I said you are turning from port, you are turning port at 15 degree radar, bring it to 0, if you bring it to 0 you expect that eventually see bring it to 0 eventually at some point it will go on a straight line, but it does not go on a straight line, it will still go on a circle, large circle. You see understand this no, the ship is here you are turning, so 15 degree you are turning at this rate, at this point of time I have brought my radar to 0, what do you expect? It will keep turning for a while, but eventually it will become a straight line, because my radar is 0, but if the ship was unstable and in some ships it is a reality, it will still keep turning slowly and this is a very realistic scenario, which also means that is one thing. Second thing is then control, see this is turning this side, but not only that it is a 0 radar, even if I give radar to be say plus 1 up to this point, that is up to this point, let us say this is 2 degree, so I give radar 1 degree on the other side yet it is turning on the same side and in fact 
I, I, without naming, I can tell that we have experience of, for this in real objects. For example, the certain underwater vehicles that, you know, real life problems we are looking at, they are it will behaving that side, that way. It is actually have, and, and that trajectory is an indication that the bo inherent body has a negative C. Negative C meaning, you remember what we have talk, talk, talked about that, you know, all this N R by this Y R minus M, it is actually becoming less than this thing. So, therefore, we have to make design changes, you have to make sure that there are pr proper changes, so that it does not behave that way, because you really cannot control. Now, for a shape, what is happening? So, this is a, this is a test, which will tell you about the indication of, uh, you know, like instability, but now, for a shape, there are ships, which has got this instability, maybe within 2 degree, 3 degree, see, this is, this, this extent is the extent of instability. Larger the C, larger will be this loop. But suppose it is within plus minus 1 degree. Sometime you may not uh, worry, because you can always absorb the by action, act, uh, action of radar. You can always control it, you know, by using radar. Or the only problem is that, if I want to go on a straight line, I have to continuously correct by act, acting radar. So, as I was saying, we will find out later on, that if you have instability, or C is very small, you actually have very quick responsiveness. You give a radar, it zooms past and have a very tight circle. So, if I want a tight circle, I have to have a C small, and sometimes it becomes negative. We can live with that. You can live with that, because you can always design a radar, as long as it is within a small distance, plus minus 1 degree, you can correct it by radar action, right. So, this is what is called the direct, uh, you know, like spiral. Uh, maneuver. What here we did, you know, is that you wanted to give a radar and find out the way of it. Now, in the, what I was telling the next one that is uh, this um, back, back reverse spiral, where you do the same thing. Let me remove this. Pages are gone. Here, what you do actually is the same thing as the spiral test, but what you want to do is that you want to find out for a given this is what you do. Essentially, what you do is start, they say you try to give a certain del delta to find uh, you, you want to start with say psi dot equal to something like say some rate of turn, let us say 0 0.5 degree per second or something. Find out this is actually for what delta. You keep trying and find out at which delta I am getting this. Then lower that to 0.4, find out for which delta I get this. So, it is the opposite thing. See, in, in this case, you find out x versus y here, y versus x you may say. So, what would happen? This measurement you will find out again same thing, radar angle here, this is radar angle and this is here r. So, you will find that its unstable shape will come like that. For this, I have a radar angle this, for this, I have radar angle You will find out that for 0 also, uh, no, there is a radar angle, 0 also there is radar angle here and it behaves that way and suddenly it will jump here and then become going like that. And if you go that side, it will go like that, suddenly it will jump here, go like that and this spiral, the path taken is this. Same thing, in fact, the, the loop that you are finding out essentially the same thing. Be, what it means, you know, there is if, if it is unstable, you expect delta versus r unique relation for given delta, there should be given r, it should go through 0, delta 0, r should be 0. That is what should be a stable shape. But unfortunately, there are shapes if this kind of loop happens that delta versus r within a certain limit of plus minus, say, delta critical, say, delta versus r within does not follow a proper relation, no unique relation, which th therefore will tell that the vessel within delta plus minus delta critical is uncontrollable. Say plus minus 2 degree, you is uncontrollable. If you give 1 degree, you do not know which side will turn. If you give plus 1 degree, you can turn this way or the other way around. That is what it means, if it happens. So, this is the test and 
people can find out from the this test diagnostic what is the instability. Okay, so this is one test. Now I let me talk about quickly pull out test. This is of course another test, even simpler, which will give you unstable. What you do is very simple. It, it, this is actually straight like this. You begin basically shape a steady. That is all. All that you do, if you look at that, you are giving a rudder angle, basically you are turning okay, steadily at some 10 degree, 15 degree which is large enough where it will turn. Then just bring it back to 0. So, what would happen? This is your time and you are measuring here. Rudder angle is held delta and r or psi dot, r is same as psi dot, right? rudder angle is held fixed, okay. then rudder is simply brought back to 0, this is rudder. Now what will happen, what do you expect to psi? It is having a fixed, of course I have already assumed that it has turned from before I need to, so say it has reached a some kind of this thing, constant, then you expect it to eventually become 0 And you will do that in both sides, this side also you will do, eventually it should become 0. But what would, this is the, the, the simple test, you know, there is very simple test. All you do is that you simply, uh, you know, like give a rudder 15 degree or so, a sufficiently large rudder, then bring it back to 0. What would happen is that some uh, vessel, you will find out that this does not come to 0, but it becomes like that. And this side, if you do, it will become like that. There is a gap. In fact, this gap this delta gap is exactly this delta gap, it, it can be found out, this delta gap that we found out here, this, this gap will turn out to be this. What it means is here, I brought the rudder down to 0, but I am, oh no sorry, this gap is the r dot gap, not, not delta, because here of course delta has been brought to 0, it is this gap, r dot gap. That is, even if my delta is 0, my so much r dot is there. That is this. That is the value of r, not r dot, r or psi dot. This is actually r psi dot at delta equal to 0. You see, if this happens, obviously, it basically means that the vessel is unstable. And you know, you can do all this thing even numerical simulation. You can also do, in fact, we keep doing it, I will say that later classes to diagnose that. You will find out that if you are taking an equation of motion where C was negative and if you were to do a simulation of this type, trajectory simulation, you will find a graph like that. If C is very, very positive, it will be 0. If you make it larger positive, it will become like that. If you make it even larger, it will become like that. But faster it will come back. Now, more C stable, faster it will come to 0. It is, say C was minus something, it will become off. Then if your C was 0, it will be just gradually coming very slowly. If this C is, say, positive, small positive, it will become like that. Make the C larger positive, it will become like that. So this is another test, very simple test that is done. And you know, these tests are very common. I, um, in, 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 uh, there are real objects, there are actually ships designed which does have instability. There are practical objects, even a submarine in a surface condition quite often become unstable. For example, the, there is an object I do not want to give the detail, but if you bring the rudder to 0, it will still keep turning, but at a larger radius in the same direction. So, you have no control on that. So, when you do this test, you of course come to know the vessel behavior as it actually happened, 
lack of stability or not. And once, uh, once more, I am saying you can do this test at a model scale. You can also do this test or you can simulate numerically using those coefficients. You can also simulate these trajectories, you know, numerically simulate in computer to determine this. And in fact, it is nice to play around. Then you change NV and all, you will find out exactly how much I should change it to make it how much stable to get a course. Then of course, you have to ask that equation to do that. I need so much NV to make it stable. What is the design change I should make to get that NV? As I said yesterday, we put a cake, NV has become less negative. Okay? Or what do I, what should I do? And these are the life problems. Okay? Reverse problem will also occur. That I will tell you this reverse problem just before I go, is that there was a case of this uh, certain shipping corporation ships, which were supposed to go on a canal in Japan for a long distance. These ships were very sluggish, so stable that if you give radar, it does not turn. So, when there is a canal back, you know, going like that, it is not able to turn <laughs> because it can take much larger uh, radius of turn. It is almost like a dogmatic, you know, like a, like a mule or something, it does not want to turn. So, then you have to have a design changes to make it more maneuverable. It was so stable because what happened typically, larger ships, you see, like tanker and all, you make it reasonably stable because they are designed to go straight in some course. And in open ocean also if they turn very small turn. When they come to port, you actually have um, tax assisting it from all sides. It is, it is essentially the smaller petrol vessel, naval vessels, you know, coast guard vessels. These are the ones that you want high maneuverability. Okay. We will come to the, the other one now called zigzag uh, test. Okay. Overshoot or zigzag test. This is another interesting test. Let me put that from here. I like to these numbers. Actually, they call this. this we call it sometimes came. Basically, you know, the the tests have been kind of named with the in the name of the person who has kind of you know like uh, suggested that. So that's why some people will call it as came overshoot test, but we call it zigzag test. In the, the name is very common, uh, obvious. You know from the name, this is the test. You know. It gets carried down for land vehicles like scooters, cars, etc. You have to just see how you can go zigzag, how fast you can go. So, here what we do is like this. Once again, this this steady Now here, see this is a, this is a important that we will um, do slowly. Give rudder. Let me first write now in this way. You give rudder to certain value, delta set, which you have set. Okay. The ship begins to turn. All right. As the heading begins to turn, there is a set value. You I will you will understand that when we actually plot this diagram much better. When it reaches a particular set value, just at that time bring it bring the radar back to minus delta set, just reverse it and hold it there.
See, basically you are swinging. I actually, this this is in writing is always difficult to understand. When I actually plot the diagram, you will probably find out uh, much easily. So let me plot this diagram here. Let us probably use color some. Maybe easier then. This is time. With time imaging, see here. Rather is you are bringing it to some delta z value. Actually, typically, typically, this is called as delta set psi set maneuver. And these are typically 10, 10 or 20, 20, etcetera. In fact, these two are the most common test. 10, 10, we call 10, 10 zigzag or 20, 20 zigzag, which means my delta set is 10, psi set is 10 or 20, 20. We do not normally have 10, 20. So, but I, I, the reason I mention is because I wanted to have a general description. So, what happened? You hold the radar here. The blue line is radar. Eh? So, this is my delta set value, say 10 degree. Hold it here. What happened to my heading? The ship's heading is begin to change. It was 0. This is psi. It begin to change. Now, at some point it reaches this value moment it reaches this value, moment it has reached this value, bring this back to minus, minus 20 degree. This is delta set. So, this is minus you hold it here. What would happen to this? All, all you are doing is basically what you are measuring is you are measuring its position, its heading angle, etcetera. You also measure y, the position, how much it is shifted. So, this will heading will go like that and it will come back eventually here. Moment it has reached this minus delta set, swing it back opposite side and again hold it here. So, this is going to go like that and again go here. Again shift it back. So, this again go like that. Okay. This is now what you are measuring remember what you are measuring you are always measuring the heading you are plotting this in order to plot that what I need time versus this is time, time versus the way I have swung the rudder and heading angle also y, y is the you know if you call this x distance the shape will behave like that you know I will show that in the next page. Okay. It will be something like that today the shape here if I draw a straight line. So, then you have given rudder so it is going to turn eventually here it turns here the heading has turned here remember this this is a path straight line path. Then at this point I give the rudder, but it, it is still going to turn for some more time here then it is going to come back here. But it remember here this distance is y distance it may not come other side, but this heading angle would have reached minus 10 degree when again you turn it. So, it will again overshare and go. So, this y that is path width is also what you measure and that may be uh, uh, plotted here. The path width will plot here as something like say it not it not necessarily come back exactly here it may come something like that. Because after all it is a heading only of change remember the the vessel may not have come back on the other side just the heading has changed remember that. Okay. So, you plot this and the measure now the measures are like this that uh, uh, let me tell you this most important measure is the overshoot measure okay. this side this first overshoot what is overshoot remember that when the heading was 10 degree I reverse the radar, but the shape 
kept going to the same direction, turning in the same direction for some more time. So, it overshot. Let us say it went up to 18 degree before it began to reverse. That means, although when it was at 10 degree, I changed my radar, unlike a car, it did not change the direction on the spot, it went on the same direction for a while and then changed. How much it went more is what is called overshoot, that is first overshoot. Similarly, here this is my second overshoot. You can say first overshoot yaw angle. Okay. Of course, if you keep going like that, you have third overshoot yaw angle and all that. Normally for, so successively that, basically why it is important because you know after second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth becomes almost the same one because they reach a steady state type. First one is always less because of the transient, you know it is just going on a straight line you are going. So, first one is usually less, second one is more than that, third, fourth, fifth ones become similar and most ships will not go beyond second one. I will tell you later on the rules and regulations given by IMU that a ship must satisfy which would be stipulating for first and second only, that is it must be so and so for you to certify. Okay. So, you see here this is one measure then other things let us uh, look at the time. So, execute wise basically this point first point T wise I will say this time for first execute of radar because there is a time where you first execute. Why first execute? This is the time first time you are given a radar angle, you executed the radar bring it to this then at this point I swung it back, so it is my second execute. Then at this point my third execute, right. Okay. This distance Okay, that uh, one more thing I should tell about this overshoot. Now, you see there is another thing called path width overshoot, the overshoot of y. This is given by this distance that is first path width, over. in fact only this one is important, let me write it down. Why this much? Remember at the time, see it was already here. See at the time I reversed my radar, it was already here, it was already shifted to this much. Now I reverse the radar, I, I expect the ship to go on the other side, but it has not gone to the other side, it has still kept going in the same side for a while and overshot this by this much amount. Okay. So, you see it has still keep going on the same direction and overshot. See my it has gone say this at this point, at this point I have reversed the radar. I want the ship to come back, but from here it has still gone further this much and then begin to turn back. How much further it has gone? That is my overshoot. Okay. So, this is my path overshoot, then comes this time uh, period, period of oscillation. Normally, this period of oscillation uh, would be 0 to 0, this say this 0, let me put the red line to where again it actually here where again it comes down this much that, that is you know like a sign curve that comes from here to the where it has come this would be a period of oscillation. up to where this graph has come down here. The important point is of course, one important point is reach. That reach is basically, this is important. 
how do I write this? Reach means your 0 to the time where that is time time to reach basically you can say this is reach. Of course, it is you can say time reach time what it means is see once again you must understand heading was 0 again if the heading becomes 0 after so much time the time that is taken is reach time to reach and the distance if you measure on the x axis will be distance to reach. These are the things therefore, you measure okay, one execute reach etcetera. Now, how are they related? Let us see how are they related to the maneuvering. So, let me write it down here uh, because what happened I will just write it down little bit and then we will go. So, the important quantities that you measure In fact, reach can be called this is first reach, then next to next 0 is second reach, etcetera, which is also like oscillation period. The other two are important are this overshoot. Max or set, which is of course same thing. when delta is basically what I mean it is the time y max minus the time the y at the time when delta was reversed. See this is the time when the rudder has been reversed the execute time. So, y maximum y minus the y at the time delta is reversed that is the overshoot. See now the question is like this if I call this 1, 2, 3 I will tell you it is a direct measure I will just mention this. Basically, reach time, this reach time this time or the oscillation period 
directly tells me how effective the um, ship is, how fast it is turning, because this time will reduce. What you know if it is turned faster? That means if the radar is bigger or the ship is quickly responding to radar, obviously you will reach this much faster, because it is turning very quickly. You know, moment you turn, it, uh, the, the ship turns. Okay. So, reach basically will be a measure of how fast it turns, how fast it responds. Similarly, now uh, the 2 and 3 measure of counter maneuverability, what is known as counter maneuvering abilities. Okay, let me write down this part again. Reach improves that I mentioned here. Here, this is important. but there is a but there. Decreases with I will tell you what the, the, this, this point, see here what we wrote, see this is what we, we, we need to see now, reach of course will improve with radar effectiveness, bigger radar it will be much faster, your overshoot is important, it will in, increase with radar effectiveness, that means, that means this will go shoot further, what would happen if you make radar bigger this whole thing gets squeezed, so this graph, this graph will become squeezed, pushing. That means, you are reaching faster, but you are also overshooting more, remember that. You are also overshooting more. And of course, the other thing that we said, uh, what is this? Okay. It will decrease with stability. If you now make it very highly stable, radar may be effective. See, the two things happening. Radar responsiveness is one thing, how fast it responds to radar, that depends on also that is the effectiveness of the radar, how much radar is acting. But if the ship is for example, very sluggish, la very stable, so you make a bigger radar also, it will not overshoot much. So, you see the stability, overly stable will try to reduce this. So, basically overshoot will decrease the stability. So, it will come down if you make it stable. Now, obviously, you do not want a ship which is very stable and th therefore, in order to turn, I want a very big radar, <laughs> right. So, you obviously want a balance. So, the point therefore, is that see that these two are reversed normally, the same thing will happen in the part width. If you make it very stable shape, it will respond very slowly to radar, take longer time and have a lower overshoot, lower overshoot means in a canal and all lower overshoot, but respond much, much slowly. On the other hand, if you want to make it very, uh, you know like uh, very uh, what I should say uh, uh, less stable, it will quickly turn but as in turn it overshoots more, so it might hit the bank. For example, if I have a canal here, so if you make it very thin, the ship can actually overshoot and hit, but if you make it very small, then it may not able to turn and negotiate here. This is the reason why in the next later way I will tell you that IMO has given stipulation that a ship must possess certain overshoot, but not more than this. Overshoot has to be limited because you cannot allow the overshoot to be high because overshoot high implies lack of safety, it may hit on the side. 
the two ships are going. You want to turn, you just overshoot and hit. So overshoot is actually opposite of safety. You know, more overshoot means less safe. But on the other, that is what is the IGM will tell from safety. It's just like for safety, I say, make it very high GM. But we will like to also make sure that the ship is able to respond. So designer will try to make sure that it has got good responsiveness. Just like we will try to make sure that metacentric height is not so high, so that the, it becomes very stiff ship. But rules will tell me that this, so, they, so there is again an opposing factor, safety and controllability. Uh, basically controllability, safety you may say and maneuverability. Highly maneuverable means it tries to overshoot. So you make the ship unstable, towards unstable, less stable, very just marginally stable, it will very quickly respond, but becomes unstable, overshoots more. So these are kind of measure, you know, like so we in, in shipbuilding are always obviously uh, confronted with such kind of dual requirement. You know, one gives you more, the other gives you less and you have to make sure there is a balance there. So when you are designing, you have to make sure that this is within the limit. So with that, I am ending uh, today. Tomorrow, we will pick up the turn, the other very important maneuver called the turning circle maneuver. Okay, so with that. Thank you.